morning morning everybody i have already sent my recorded lecture so have a look thank you thank you very much for those kind words of introduction and i really appreciate the opportunity given to me by dr agrawal and team hormone india and next 15 minutes or so i will be discussing with you the various clusters of type 2 diabetes and what is the indian relevance now i really like this topic because i believe that it's time to look little bit different analyze type 2 diabetes little different than what we otherwise traditionally do in our day to day clinical practice so thank you once again dr agrawal and the entire hormone india team for this lovely opportunity and for this talk i do not have any conflict of interests now this slide you must have seen you know many a times in almost all the conferences but i want you to have your attention to this point that i want to make that is that if you really look at the south east asian countries what is different than the other parts of the globe and especially the pacific uh, group of the countries is that the look of the you know look at the rise in the incidence of diabetes and by 2021 we nearly have as an indian subcontinent around 74 million but the rise in the southeast asian country is significant and southeast asian countries they consist of bangladesh bhutan nepal india mauritius and sri lanka remember that pakistan is not the part of the southeast asian countries so the question is is our phenotype of type 2 diabetes different why despite of all the advances in the monitoring in the therapeutic armamentary in the awareness and education related to the diabetes why we are not achieving the goals and we need to understand that indians as a population as an indian as a as a uh, or, or or a genotype or phenotype we do have got a difference between the fat proportion and the presence of the metabolic challenge you can clearly see look at the obesity overweight and the amount of the diabetes prevalence that we have and this paper which was published by dr anup mishra and dr shashan joshi beautifully illustrated that asian indians we have very high amount of body fat especially the visceral fat we have got high waist circumference but still we are sarcopenic we have got very high insulin resistance and metabolic situation or a syndrome which ultimately leads to the disruptions like diabetes or classically indian phenotypical dyslipidemia like you know a very high triglyceride levels a very low hdl cholesterol level and a high small dense ldl cholesterol levels in comparison to the european population and that makes us what we classically are known as a mon indians or thin fat or tough indians thin from outside and fat from inside and unfortunately in comparison to the the caucasians or the blacks we have realized from this slide that asian males or females we have got a significantly lower muscle mass so we are sarcopenic and this paper which was beautifully published in bmj demonstrated that and the reason for this is usually the genetic bias that we have now we need to understand that in south east asian population we do have got a increase in coding of a gene which is related to myostatin which is actually responsible for the skeletal muscle growth in utero and that's how we ultimately end up in having the inhibition of this encoding of the myostatin and leading to low lean muscle mass and hence this paper which was published by dr chitranjan yagnik obviously demonstrate that this omnius octet which difference of top in 2009 in one of the ad conference during his mentoring lectures we need to understand this starts right in the utero as far as the indian babies are concerned now we all are aware that indian babies are the smallest birth weight babies in comparison to the rest of the global babies born but still we have got a very higher amount of body fat the visceral fat and the organ fat deposition so we need to understand that indian babies right from the birth they have 
a tendency to develop what is called as a metabolic derangement or metabolic syndrome and it starts becoming evident in near the first decade of the or the early start of the second decade of the life and we have got much higher insulin levels in fact one of the publication by dr chitranjan yagni again showed that in comparison to the caucasian babies indian babies have three times higher cord blood insulin levels so from the hyperinsulinemic thrifty gene hypothesis we have changed our cell to insulin resistant phenotype of uh, the typical population and hence indians are labeled to have what is called as a very high amount of insulin resistance syndrome which is not completely untrue but then what about those young indians are there any clusters of type 2 diabetes in indian population which are different than westerners and let me tell you i want to bring it to your notice one beautiful difference between this slide which you must have so seen in most of the conferences which talks about the yy paradox where on your left side of your screen is professor john yudkin from oxford and to the right side of your screen is dr chitranjan yagni uh, from bjmc pune and look at the bmis identical bmis but look at the differences in the fat percentage dr yagni has 21.2% of the body fat whereas dr john yudkin has 9.1 and this paper was for the first time you know dr yagni talked in the melbourne idf in 2003 and now dr yagni shared me the latest picture of him which is one of the other oxford colleague and look at the change of the body fat percentage of dr yagni with the growing age and the body fat percentage of his colleague from the oxford again so you realize that the patterns are changing now indians are probably becoming a little more different and there are good number of publications and one such publication which i want to mention is the inspired study which was published by dr rm anjana and the team and you realize that indian subclass of the patient they talked about have some clusters of type 2 diabetes in fact i was also lucky enough to be a part of the same thing where we reviewed the new and the unique clusters of type 2 diabetes identified especially in the indians where we looked at the eight different parameters we looked at the age of the onset the bmi the waist hip circumference the the glycemic control we looked at the dyslipidemia pattern and also we looked at the fasting and the stimulated c peptide levels and we looked at the data which was of nearly 19000 patients so apart from the classical asian indian phenotype thin fat india what we found out significantly was there are four different clusters of diabetes which are seen in the indian population the commonest one is the mild age related diabetes which is around 35% where usually you get diabetes in the fourth or fifth or sixth decade they do have got a normal hdl cholesterol they have a fairly well preserved beta cell function they have milder diabetes and they are at the low risk of the complication and this is what we call it as a classical garden variety diabetes but then comes the younger population in indian subclass of the patient these are called as severely insulin deficient type 2 diabetes and their percentage is again around 26 to 27% so one in four are probably severe insulin deficient so gone are those days where we talk where we were talking about only insulin resistance in type 2 diabetes we need to consider even the insulin deficiency in type 2 diabetic patients and in these patients you will get very high amount of you know diabetes presenting at a very young age they present to you at relatively low bmi and low waist hip circumference but unfortunately they have got a very low homa beta that means the beta cell capacity is much lower reflected by a low c peptide levels both fasting and stimulated and they present you with cross chain control sugars and remember that this population is vulnerable to develop nephropathy very early in the life then the third uh, cluster that we see or a sub type of diabetes that we see is what is called as iron that is insulin resistance obesity obese diabetes or obesity related diabetes this is around 30% or sorry 25% patients they do have got obesity so they have higher insulin resistance so they have fairly well preserved beta cell function 
and these patients are vulnerable to develop diabetic kidney disease and retinopathy both way but diabetes kidney disease is much commoner in these patients and the fourth character a uh, typical characteristic subtype that we see in the indian population is what is called as a combined insulin resistance and deficiency diabetes this is a much severe form of diabetes presents to you at very low age or a younger age and they are very highly vulnerable to develop complications as far as the typical indian population is concerned apart from the insulin deficiency iron and the combined insulin resistance and deficiency diabetes are very very unique to indian population as far as the young type 2 diabetic is diabetic circumstances as i talked remember that I, i have spoken about the impaired beta cell reserve you can clearly see in comparison to the indians look at the beta cell function in the caucasians now we compare a lot of times to ourselves to chinese and look at the chinese population and you will realize that indians are faring much lower beta cell function in comparison to the rest of the world in this paper again by dr anjana beautifully depicts look at the age of the onset of the severe insulin deficiency and look at the bmis you will realize that we manage stress very very early another paper which got published in diabetologia also showed that there is a distinct change between the indian sub class and the european sub class where indians now have insulin deficiency as more common feature in type 2 diabetes in comparison to caucasians and the reason is probably the story of the two tails there is a clear divulge between the phenotype 2a and 2b and indians probably present through a phenotype 2b where we have got a path of developing diabetes through an impaired fasting glucose where we have got a very you know high fasting glucose level and a smallest trigger will actually stimulate a very rapid decrease in the beta cell function producing a severe form of insulin deficiency and that's how we convert from fasting to the fully you know developed diabetes very very fast and always remember this conversion happens very fast in india so indian type 2 diabetics are different in comparison to the globe are that there is an evolutionary determined factors or epigenetics playing there along with our unfortunately poorly changing waste toxified lifestyle which is adding to the challenge now last 2 minutes i will be speaking to you about clinical implications if at all are there yes it is important to understand the relevance of this primarily because that will help you in prognostication as well as the choice of the right therapeutic interventions whenever it comes to the management of diabetes and hence i strongly believe and dr anup mishra in his paper beautifully mentioned that we need guidelines which are india specific guidelines and algorithms need to be developed for our use in our country for suitable for our country our population apart from the global guidelines and why is so so because we being indian practitioners have a tendency to intensify the oral therapies much more than the insulin therapies in this paper from dr borgarkar showed that no matter how much you increase the oids the glycemic controls will never be achieved to the targets and hence this paper by dr anup mishra probably has demonstrated that indian population will require insulin much early in the management of type 2 diabetes so to summarize this, there are distinct clusters of type 2 diabetes which we need to look at and proactively try and identify which will help you in correctly choosing the therapeutic intervention always remember that we being south asians we need to understand that we do have got insulin resistance for sure but also along with that we have got impaired beta cell reserve we have got extremely high amount of ectopic organ fat deposition we are sarcopenic and we do have a distinctive insulin resistance and insulin deficiency combined diabetes as a feature of our diabetes population so we need to have insulin intervention as early as possible and we need guidelines and algorithms developed for the entire nation population i thank you very much